on an all-new Dr. Phil. We're identical twins. We're both anorexics and bulimic. Two beautiful sisters. He's called them the vagabone skeleton. I didn't realize that you ate that much and threw it up. Because they're not a part of my life. A family in crisis. We want money for all of this. That's what you said to my staff? You need to become part of the solution or we're done. Let's do it. Is a safe place to talk about hard things. Stand by. We'll count you down. I try to be an emotional compass and point you in the right direction. Five, four. I am not giving up on you. you to meet Taylor and Tricia. They're identical twins who've been best friends since birth. They're 16 now, and although they're still inseparable, these twins have become each other's worst enemies. Why? Well, in a short time, these beautiful, healthy sisters have lost nearly 50 pounds each due to identical eating disorders. They admit they know they're dying, but say they won't stop because neither wants to be labeled the fat twin. Now their parents, Vicki and Robert, say Taylor and Tricia need to be identical in every way, including binging and purging the same amount of food and calories. They say if their daughters don't get help soon, they'll be dead by the end of the year. Take a look. When I look at my twin daughters, Trisha and Taylor, I see two girls that are about to die. When I hug them, there's nothing to grab. Just skin and bones. The twins have both lost nearly 50 pounds in less than a year. They weighed 135 pounds a year ago, and today they weigh less than 80 pounds. It just breaks my heart to even think about it every day. The girls are inseparable. They do everything together. They go to the stores. They plan out what they're going to eat, and they have to eat the same exact amount, whether it's a cracker, a cookie, a little Teddy Graham. First, I'm eating a peanut butter sandwich. I broke two of them. And then go to Mexico. Everything is exact. Then when they binge and purge, they do it at the exact same time. The girls are done eating now, and they're going into the bathroom to uh, throw up their food. Every day of my life, I worry if something's going to happen. In March, Trisha was taken to the hospital because she had passed out. In June, Taylor's potassium level was so low that she almost had cardiac arrest. I've tried to stop them. I've tried tough love. I try and I try and I try. I feel like I'm a failure because I can't fix my beautiful little girls. If I lose one of my girls, I will lose both of my girls. One can't live without the other. If Dr. Phil can't help my daughters, they're going to end up dying. Well, you would think having two daughters literally starving to death would unite these divorced parents. But instead, Robert insists it's all Vicky's fault. These are my collar bones. These are my like, rib cage. I like my rib cage showing. I blame Vicky 100% for my daughter's eating disorder. The girls have been with Vicky for the past two and a half years. And now they're disgusted with themselves. All they want to do is binge and go. Robert criticizes me any chance he gets. What are you doing in your house that's causing them to do this? Why aren't you doing something more? Vicky just lets them hide out in her bedroom and do the things that they've been doing behind her back. If the girls live with me, I would not allow them to be hiding in the bathroom. I would be knocking every two minutes to see if everything's okay. If not, I would take all the doors off of all the hinges. He accused me of actually not feeding my children. He thinks they're binging because 
they don't know when they're going to eat next, which is completely false. He doesn't acknowledge that this is a true illness. He thinks it's solely for attention. I think he is being distracted because of the boyfriend. Robert's go-to line is, I broke up the family. He likes to say that Aaron is the reason for the marriage ending and for causing the girl's disorder. If Vicky didn't have a boyfriend, she would be taking care of my girls a lot better than she is now. Vicky has become selfish. He's delusional. He doesn't make sense when he says stuff. I really think it is time for Vicky to give up custody of the children. It's time for me to take charge before something tragic happens. Okay. Um, guys, I'm glad to meet you both. I'm sorry for the circumstance. I, I wish we were talking about something else. Do you believe that we're talking a life or death situation here? I believe so, yes. Do you believe we're talking a life or death situation here? Yes, I do. Did one of the girls faint recently and go yes. to the hospital? Yes. And did they do a potassium read? Yes. And did they say the potassium was so low that she was at risk for immediate heart failure? Yes. You said in one of your video pieces to me that you believe this was the last stop on the subway. They were at death's door. Oh, yeah. Let's look at what you said in that, that video piece. I, I try and I try and I try. I feel like I'm a failure because <laughs> I can't fix my, my beautiful little girls. If Dr. Phil can't help my daughters, I know they're, they're not going to be here long. They're going to they're end up dying. And you said, and I quote, Dr. Phil is my daughter's last chance. It's either him or I'm burying them. That is correct, Dr. Phil. I'm making a point of this because I don't, you don't behave as though you understand the gravity of that. I have buried these girls before. I know. This bickering between the two of you, you're going to feel really stupid when not too soon from now, you're standing looking at tombstones. I have buried these girls. <laughs> Look right there. That's not what we want, Dr. Phil. I told the producers, I told Justin, the supervising producer of this show, to cancel you and send you home this weekend. And he begged me not to do it. We have resources that we can extend to families, which is unprecedented for a television show. Through last season, we have extended in aftercare for our guests $29 million in aftercare resources for our guests. $29 million. I cannot waste resources. And, and you say you want your girl's lives saved. And, but you, you get out here and you say, and I quote, we want money for all of this b****. We don't need to go through this to prove they need help. So either money or we're going home. That's final. That's what you said to my staff? That's a quote. I just know they deserve something for two full days of this. We shouldn't have this extra stress for no reason. We had to do a lot. I need spending money for the girls for things other than food, not hotel only money. I'm not telling them they can't buy anything except food. I wouldn't have done this at my house, sister's house, hotel for nothing. There's no reason they can't give them a debit card. We were misled. It should be corrected. Are you almost here? Because we're not doing any more extra. Patrick made a mistake. I don't think it's fair to punish these girls because of someone else's mistake. We want money for all of this. Those are your quotes I have in writing. But that wasn't what I, that's not how I meant to come off. I don't need money. I want them to have help. It was just a, a lot more than I expected what was going to happen this, the past five days. You were promised one thing. This was going to take a long time, and you need to clear your schedule. Yes. That's what you were promised. By the way, we record everything. Okay. When we talk to you on the phone, we record everything. You know why? Because of people like you.
Well, that's not what I'm about, though. Now you're turning this around on me. I'm here for my daughter's help. Oh, I'm turning it around on you? I don't, we're not here to discuss it. I don't want money. Well, that works out good. <laughs> you wouldn't sign the release this morning unless you got money. Yeah, because they promised a lot of things and they didn't hold up to their oh, end. Whoa, 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 yeah, okay. I mean, All that's right. not what the show okay. is about, is it? I thought no. it was about the girls. Okay. Yeah, you're right. I thought that was the I was exactly was to right. the girls help. I was exactly right. This is a waste of resources. No, it's not. This is a waste of resources. No, it is not. And I'm really sorry because I really like your girls. You either want help for your girls or you don't. I do, and I'm sorry. I'm not going to fight you, I'm not going to drag you. You are either going to be part of the problem or part of the solution. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to get an email from you 30 days from now. Well, they didn't do what they said they were going to do at the treatment. They didn't say this and you didn't say that. So let me make it clear right now in front of God, cameras and everybody, there are no promises. There are no guarantees. You get what you get. All I can do is the best I can do. And that begins with giving you a wake up call that you need to either become part of the solution or we're done. I want to be part of the solution, and I'm sorry. And by the way, the fact that these girls have anorexia and bulimia is not even almost her fault. Is it my fault, Dr. Phil? It's neither of your fault. This okay. is so far over y'all's pay grade, you have no idea. But this stuff that you think that she's not paying enough attention because she has a boyfriend, or because you guys got a divorce, or she's not feeding them so they're overeating because they don't know where their next meal is coming from, you're not seriously believing that, are you? No, not one bit. Well, then stop saying it. What did I say? You have said that you believe that she is 100% of the reason that these girls have this problem. I did say that, Dr. Yes, Joe. you did. So why do you look at me like, what? You caught me off guard. I didn't know where you were coming from. People seldom do. Right, we're going to take a break. Uh, Vicky says Robert calls the twins a bag of bones, tells them he's embarrassed to be seen with them in public. Now, that's just not what she says that's what they say we're going to talk about that when we come back and then very soon we're going to meet these girls we'll be right back i don't have any respect for robert i'm more of a father to the twins so you think he's going to be able to be a good role model to my twin girls and later we were once a happy family. Now we're here. Do what you're doing, what I saw on TV. I didn't realize that you ate that much and went straight to the bathroom and threw it on. a part of my life. Tomorrow on an all-new Dr. Phil. Once a devoted fan. He had over a thousand photos of Brooke. Now a convicted stalker. She lied under oath. Brooke Shields made me out to look like a predator. You parked outside Brooke's home and wrote her name on your car's window. You won't believe his shocking accusation. Do I think Brooke is the cause of my sister's death? Yes, I do. That is if not rational. I'm not delusional. That's tomorrow. They walk alike, they talk alike, and to ensure they look alike, identical twin sisters Taylor and Tricia binge and purge the exact same amount of food every day. Now, instead of supporting his daughters, Vicki claims her ex-husband, Robert, would rather call them bag of bones than call them and ask them how they're doing. My ex-husband treats both girls horrible. When I'm with my girls, I treat them like they're angels. I don't think I've treated them unfairly. When the girls see him or stay with him, he won't let them have food unless they eat it in front of him. He wouldn't allow them in the bathroom. The girls have not puked in front of me. And if they were to, I, I would put my foot down. Their father's constantly undermining their self-esteem. One time he had grabbed Taylor's arm and, and started feeling it and said, oh my God, that's so thin. And she just started crying hysterically. Their legs should have meat on it, not just bones and skin. 
He doesn't want to take the girls in public. He's actually told them he's embarrassed. I just feel uncomfortable. I feel like everybody is watching us chuckling and saying, wow, look at those girls. And it hurts my feelings. He's called them multiple different names, bag of bones, skeleton, just stuff that nobody should say to anybody. I may have hurt her feelings with saying that they're looking like toothpicks or they're just too skinny for your body to be wearing shorts or your face is too skinny. But I really don't believe that can contribute to my daughter's eating disorder. Robert has no sympathy whatsoever. Nothing. Now, Robert says Vicki gave up on her kids when she had an affair with her boyfriend, Aaron. But before we meet him, here's why Aaron says he's the better father figure for the twins. I don't have any respect for Robert because I don't like the way Robert treats the twins. If any respect was lost, he made a comment about being embarrassed to be seen with the twins in public. Aaron thinks he's a badass. As far as I'm concerned, he doesn't do anything to help him. I'm more of a father to them than Robert. I'm the one who's there with them every day. I don't think Aaron is being a father to my daughter, so I, I just think he comes and goes when he pleases. I don't necessarily want to call Robert a piece of but the twins, no, I've never once judged them or made a hurtful comment. Robert doesn't like the fact of another man being in his kids' lives. Aaron's always been there for the girls. When Taylor was admitted into the hospital, Aaron stayed with me and Taylor, not their dad. The twins feel they can go to Aaron with anything. Do you think he's going to be able to be a good role model to my twin girls and be able to help them out in any situation? He's probably neglecting them and just letting them do what they want. Okay, Aaron, thank you for joining us. Thank uh, you, sir. I, I want you to meet your new best friend. Okay. These girls need to perceive when they come out here and then leave here that something dramatic has changed. Absolutely. That all of a sudden they cannot divide and conquer. The adults in their life have laid down their tools of war, stand shoulder to shoulder and love them enough to put them first. There's a certain delusional system involved with, with anorexia. And again, I'm using that generally, but they, they have this kind of closed system. Even when they come out here and talk to me, they're gonna talk to me, they're gonna say what they want, but I'll tell you what they really want is to be left alone with their disease. They oh, want to yeah. go behind closed doors, they want to be alone with their disease. They want to go in there and they want to count out the crackers, they each get six, they want to count out the, this, that, and they each get that, they want to close that door, and they want to be alone with their disease. And anything you do to make that easier for them to do is speeding them towards a bad, bad result. Doesn't mean you have to be critical of them, you owe them an apology. Absolutely. We're going to meet Tricia. Um, she admits that she wants to be as tiny as her sister to the point of giving her extra bites of her cheeseburger to make sure Taylor consumes more calories. Because you see, what these girls say is they want to be identical. But secretly, they're very competitive. And each one wants to be a bit tinier than the other. And that is a deadly dynamic. We're going to meet these girls after the break. Our goal as twins is to look identical, so we don't have people saying, oh, you're the bigger twin. I get jealous when Taylor tells me that she lost a few pounds. I do things to make sure that Taylor would gain more weight than me. Sometimes I do lie to Taylor about how many crackers I eat because she is a smaller twin. And later, when you're actually binging, do you experience a high? Yes. Yes. You just want to keep eating. It's not normal to do what I do. I get jealous when Taylor tells me that she lost a few pounds. And then I say, like, that I didn't or that I gained weight. It makes me feel bad about myself. So I do things to make sure that Taylor would gain more weight than me. Sometimes I save her a bite of my cheeseburger when we're binge eating, so I know she's eating more than me. 
Sometimes I do lie to Taylor about how many crackers I eat because she is a smaller twin. I wouldn't say my goal is to be smaller than her. I'd say my goal is more to just be smaller. From making sure they count out crackers to buying the same clothes to emphasize their frail bodies, identical twin sisters, Taylor and Tricia, say when it comes to their eating disorder, they do everything identically. The twins allowed our cameras to film their daily rituals, and they admit that these rituals will kill them if they don't stop. That means they've got insight, but they keep doing it. Take a look at this. We got back from the store, buy all this food because we have cravings. We've bought crackers, mayo, the big jar of it. We got some candy bars, cheese. We come home from shopping, we sort through the bags, and then we like debate on what we want to eat for our next binge eating meal. So it's around like noon right now. We're gonna go. We're gonna get two foot long on spicy Italian. We're both anorexics and bulimic, and it's it's a weird thing because we're identical twins and we're both going through the exact same thing. We eat exactly the same things. When we keep our food in, we have the same amount, not one having more. Our goal as twins is to look identical, so we don't have people saying, oh, you're the bigger twin. Their baths are in the sink water is running. They're both in there together, uh, throwing up. Someone, we feel like we are the because people aren't mean about it. They feel that is, if we do this for attention, what do you say back to that? It's like, I don't do it for attention. I do it because my mind's messed up. It's just so hard like, to overcome on my own. We know this is very dangerous. I know that I could practically die in the next month. We still can't stop. Okay, well, the girls are here. Taylor and Tricia, uh, why don't you come on out? Hi, I'm Taylor. Taylor, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm Tricia. Tricia. How are you doing? So tell me, how do you girls feel about being here, and why did you want to be here if you do? Um, I feel nervous about being here, but I want to be here to get better. Mm -hmm. Define better for me. Um, better is you helping me overcome this disorder. How about you? Um, I'm here because I need...
your help on me overcoming this. What's wrong with what you're doing in y'all's mind? Um, I want to be able to eat normal and not have to go to the bathroom. What do you think drives you to do what you do now? I think it's an addiction. I think it's because I'm not happy with myself. In what way? What do you not like about you? About me? I don't like my appearance. You don't have to hide in closets or in bedrooms and do this. We were once a happy family. Now we're here. There's no reason for you to have to do what you're doing, what I saw on TV. I didn't realize that you ate that much and went straight to the bathroom because and threw it up. you're not a part of my life. I know, because I'm on the outside looking in, girls. Yeah, but your you mother... don't have to be. I've never told you you couldn't be I involved. I can't come into your house with Yes, you force. can. Yes, you can. Tell me why you think you started doing this and why you do it. I think I started doing this because I was very depressed. I didn't see my dad at all. I felt like he never cared. And me and my mom have a good relationship, but why can't I have a good relationship with my dad? I've never betrayed it, Gila. That's okay. Let it... I'm not saying you did. This, I'm just right saying... Right now is just a good time to listen. Why, why do you think you started doing this? Um, I see my sister losing weight, and I got jealous, and I wanted to be the same size as her. I see the pictures in the bathroom. And what do you think about that? I didn't know it was that thin. <laughs> You guys say that you want to be exactly identical, but you actually kind of compete a little bit, mm -hmm. don't you? you? You don't want to be the fat one. Yeah. Do you consciously try to outdo the other one? Yeah. Do you think that you, right now, would you describe yourself as too heavy? Too thin, about right. Too thin. Too thin? Mm hmm But yet, you don't want to gain any weight. Correct. Okay. How about you? Do you describe yourself as too thin, about right, or too heavy? About right. About right? Mm hmm And when you look at your sister, what do you see? Do you see her as looking too thin? Yes. Do you see her as looking unhealthily thin? Yes. But when you look in the mirror, do you see yourself as looking unhealthily thin? No. Mm -hmm. And when you look at your sister, what do you see? Someone really thin. Too thin? Mm -hmm. So you recognize that she, you think she would look better if she gained weight? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, tell me what you're thinking right now. I see the pictures in the background. Uh, and what do you think about that? I, I didn't know it looked that thin. <laughs> uh -huh. And when you, when you see that, tell me what goes through your mind. Said it's not normal to do what I do. <laughs> when you're doing it, when you're actually binging, the two of you are binging, do you experience a high? Yes. Yes. Describe that to me. Um, it's kind of like you lose control. Like, you just want to keep eating and eating. What do you experience when you, what's the high like for you when you're binging? It's like you, whatever you can find, you eat it. Uh-huh. But what's the emotion you feel? What's, what's the high like? Is it excitement, exhilaration, relief, relaxation? Um, I feel what, relief. Relief from? Like, from life. Usually when we want relief, it means that there's pain involved. So describe the pain that that gives you relief from. 
Can I answer that? Mm -hmm. um, I'm not, I don't constantly like think I'm fat at the moment because my mind is on food and not my like appearance. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Tell me what you're thinking right now. I'm sad. Why? That was a picture when I knew how to eat normal and didn't constantly hate myself. Do you miss her? I do. Do you miss her life? <laughs> What do you think when you look at that picture? I think of when I was happy, when I had a caring family, mm -hmm. when I had a big group of friends, mm -hmm. when I did things. You girls can overcome this. proud of me again, it would mean the world to me because I haven't had your support this past year. <laughs> I love you and I'm going to do better for you, Taylor. Tomorrow on an all-new Dr. Phil. The man convicted of stalking Brooke Shields. She lied under oath. His shocking accusation. You say she's responsible for my sister's okay. death. I'm not delusional. That's tomorrow. I want you to stand up for me. I don't want you to say a word. I just want you to stand up. I want you to stand up for me. I want you to look your father in the eye. And I want you to start telling your father what I want from you I do not get. What I want from you is the support that I need. What I want from you is a good relationship. What I want from you is love. What I want for you is to do things with me. What I want from you is to come around and see me. What I want from you is for you to be a part of my life. If you were proud of me again, it would mean the world to me because I haven't had your support this past year. <laughs> what I want from you it's for you to act like my dad. I want you to tell her, I am so sorry that. I am so sorry that I put you through this. I'm so sorry that you've had to do this to yourself. I'm so sorry that I haven't been in your life as much as I have been. I'm so sorry that I have to work so much that I'm not able to see you as much as I possibly can. I'm so sorry that I had to move away when we divorced and I can't see you like I would daily, like I always did. I'm sorry that you, you have to move to a different city. I'm sorry that, that I had to live with my mother. I'd rather have you, I'm sorry that you don't live with me. I'm sorry that we weren't a happy family and this all had to come about the way that it is. I'm sorry for all the hurtful things and words that I've said to you. I'm sorry for not being in your life and being that role model. I'm sorry that this all had to come about. I'm sorry that I haven't been the best father towards you and your sister. I'm sorry that it took all this traveling to try and look at you face to face and face reality. I am sorry for everything. I am sorry that you've been put into this situation. I'm sorry for your disorders. I'm sorry for belittling you. I am sorry for not checking up on you daily. You tell her why you love her. I love you because you're the most, you girls are, are, are so pretty. I hate, I hate to see the way that you hurt yourselves. Tell her why you love her. I love you because you're one of me.
I love you because of who you are. I love you from the bottom of my heart. I love you and I'm gonna do better for you, Taylor. You gonna give up on her? Absolutely not, I will never give up on my daughters. My daughters are so beautiful to me. This show is almost over, and we're getting ready to start taping a new one. You're going to be in the Los Angeles area, and you want to watch a live studio taping of the Dr. Phil Show. Go to drphil.com for free tickets, or call 323-461-PHIL. Just look your father in the eye. I want you to tell him what you need him to do from this day forward. What you need from him that you're not getting. I want you to show that you love me. I want you to show that you care about me. I want you to show that I that you want me to be a part of your life. I want you to show that you want me and Taylor to get better. I want you to sh show that you aren't afraid to go in public with me and Taylor. I want you to show that I need something to you. I want you to show that you didn't mean the things you said. I want you to treat me like you used to. I want you to love me even if I have my flaws. I want you to make time for me. I want you to love me. Do you miss your dad? I do miss my dad. Tell him. I miss you, dad. <laughs> A lot. Can you tell her she's not going to miss you anymore and mean it? You're not going to miss me ever again. I'll always be there for you. I'm sorry if I haven't been there for you in the past year. And I'm sorry if I hurt you in any way, which I know I probably have. But I don't want that to be the, the match that lit the fire to make you the way that you are today. I love you, Trisha. I've never stopped loving you. I love ask you her so to forgive much. you if you want her to Will forgive you. Will you please forgive me for all my flaws that I've created in this past year? Yes. I love you. And I'll always love you until the day that I die. Come here. So what needs to be done here? I'm going to tell them right after the break. Want to know what's coming up on Dr. Phil? Visit our website and subscribe to our email newsletter. You'll get weekly updates, life strategies, and exclusive video that you won't find anywhere else. Plus, on drphil.com, you can see sneak previews of upcoming shows. Log on today. I had a lot of conversation with these three, particularly these two and Aaron as well, before you came out here. And um, they've made a lot of mistakes. And we do the best we can with what we know how to do at the time. We make mistakes and kids make mistakes too. And. Taylor, I, I know you feel guilty for getting Tricia involved in all of this, and you, you both have emotions about what you're doing. I, there's just all of this is, is just intermixed. You know, your, your mom thought this was just a phase when it began, and for a lot of girls it might be. You never know. 
but for you guys, it became more than that. And then you started triggering each other off and it started spiraling out of control. And pretty soon it starts to get to be a compulsion. Your mom, she loves you to the absolute core of her soul. And she does what she knows how to do, but she, this is, you just don't know how to do this. Right. Your dad loves you to the core of his soul. He, he reacts out of fear, and so he, he does things that he shouldn't have done, said things he shouldn't have said. He does that out of fear and frustration. They both love you the same. Aaron cares about you. The, all of these adults in your life care about you, but they don't know what to do, and you all don't know how to stop. You couldn't stop now if you wanted to, could you? No. So you have to have help. And I, I've asked Bill Parsons to come here. He's the CEO of Timberline Knowles. I've also asked Dr. Uh, Juliet uh, Caceres to come here. She's the clinical director. And Timberline Knowles is a leading residential treatment center uh, for women and adolescent girls with really serious eating disorders. Um, they deal with all kinds of disorders, substance abuse disorders, trauma, mood, and they deal with this in a, a dual diagnosis way, a co-occurring disorders. So if there's anxiety, depression, uh, any, any kinds of trauma sort of things that exist, at the same time as something like anorexia or bulimia is expressing itself at the same time, they deal with these things all at one time because you can't do half a loaf. You can't fix half of a problem. You know, Bill and Juliet, ordinarily, I would not, and I bet you guys would not recommend having twins go into treatment together. Ordinarily, I would recommend separating them and sending them to di different treatment centers. Mm -hmm. My thought here is that because they do trigger each other so much that we ought to at least take a stab at trying to get them better together mm -hmm. and See if they can trigger each other to health. Mm -hmm. And if that doesn't work, then we can think about doing it separately. What do y'all think about that? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Do you think that's worth a shot? Absolutely. Yeah. I, I want to make that offer to you guys. Are you willing to do this and lean into it? Yes. How about you? Yes. Okay. Do you guys support this? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Then that's what we're going to do. Guys, I'm going to leave them in your very capable hands. And as you know, once we do this, I turn them over to you and I step back and mind my own damn business. And I'll hear from you when you're finished in your very capable hands. All right, thank you very I much. think these thank girls you. are going to be absolute rock stars. And when you're done, I expect you to come back and tell us how things are going. And I expect you to pay it forward in years to come. Fair enough. All right. I want to thank all of my guests today and a very special thanks to Bill Parsons and uh, Dr. Juliet Caceres and Timberline Knowles for helping these very deserving twins.